Hello, good evening, and welcome to Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television. Iron Port is proudly brought to you by the Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel PLC, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, Meridian Port Services, and indeed Phoenix Insurance. This show is proudly powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA. Our media partner on this journey of a lifetime is the Business and Financial Times, the BNFT. Now, if you want to have a grasp of all that transpired on the show tonight, make a date and grab the Thursday edition of the BNFT, and you'll be able to see all that happened here uh, on the show tonight. Uh, we are streaming live on our social media pages on Facebook. We are streaming live at Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Still on Facebook, we are live at Port of Tema. And on YouTube, we are streaming live at I on Port. I on Port. We shall be getting interactive with you, but today our numbers have changed. And so all you have to do is send us your messages and comments via our new number uh, just for this week. And that is 0500 -00 Zero five zero 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 nine one four four, and when the time is ripe, we shall be activating the phone lines for you to call in. Now, our lines for the call in have also changed, so we shall be giving that to you, or it will show on your screen when the time is right. My name is Kennedy Mona. We are going for a quick break. When we return, we'll continue with the show. Please do stay. Now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policy that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my Contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers' compensation for all the workers on site with Serene Insurance. They will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today. Serene Insurance, a new face of insurance. Call us now. MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, 
you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302-246-319 or 0243-690-492. At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. All right, so welcome back. We are now going to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And in the course of the week, the president, Nanado Danko Ikufado, had calls to deliver a five-point agenda uh, on the national, at the National Blue Economy Summit. That's a maiden edition uh, here in our country, Ghana. And then experts have called for science-based ocean management approach for our country. Uh, plus the fact that GPH is encouraging the port community to stay fit. We'll tell you how. The details are captured in the following stories. Please stay. The maiden edition of the National Blue Economy Summit has been held in Accra, aimed at mobilizing transformative ocean action to achieve the sustainable development goals. Under the theme, Our Ocean's Health, Our Prosperity, Our Planet's Security, the two-day conference brought together industry players, diplomats, academics, students, traditional leaders, policymakers, and the media to appreciate critical ocean concerns the massive socio-economic potentials the ocean possesses and how to sustainably manage it. The myriad of topics deliberated on include plastic pollution, sustainable ocean foods, maritime security, and innovative financing of ocean action. Special advisor to the president on the SDGs and Sherpa on ocean action, Dr. Eugen Owusu said, the ocean represents the future when it comes to Ghana's food security, prosperity, and national security, hence, should be treated as such. We must strive for a blue economy that is built on the principles of sustainability, inclusivity, and environmental equity. A blue economy that harnesses the potential of our ocean while preserving the invaluable resources for generations to come. The Norwegian ambassador to Ghana, Ingrid Mostad, touched on the partnerships that exist between her country and Ghana in sustainable ocean management. The blue economy, in fact, can be a powerful motor for the prosperity and development of Ghana. We are immensely proud of the efforts put into this cooperation on both sides and of its successes. For example, the GEAR Directive, now preventing trawlers from catching young fish and small species, protecting both stocks, and the interests of local artisanal fishers. President of the Republic, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado, proposed a five-point agenda for urgent action at the country level to protect the oceans, planet, and the well-being of citizens. We must be deliberate in ensuring greater and smarter investments into ocean action. Ghana's ocean scape is financially, financed largely through public philanthropic and donor resources. While Ghana's private capital investment landscape in the past decade has seen significant growth, not much of capital is deployed to the blue economy. To attract private capital into more sustainable marine-based projects, we must encourage private-public partnerships. The National Blue Economy Summit was spearheaded by the Sustainable Development Goals Advisory Unit at the Office of the President and supported by the Government of Norway, the United Nations Development Programme, the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, the Environmental Protection Agency and the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. The Director of the Institute of Environment and Sanitation Studies at the University of Ghana, Professor Kwesia Pienin Addo has encouraged Ghana to move away from the reactive knee-jerk approach towards a science-based approach and the management of the country's ocean resources. He said this will enable the country use proven scientific data and knowledge to develop workable lasting solutions to Ghana's ocean challenges. Professor Pienin Addo, who is also an advisor to Ghana's Sustainable Ocean Plan, was speaking during a plenary session of the Maiden National Blue Economy Summit in Accra. Fortunately for us, we have research institutions that are doing very well under their challenges, 
that we need to resource these research institutions so that they can do more than they are doing now. Trust me, we have scientists in this country who are doing so much. And if we resource these scientists, we can be able to solve these problems and be able to realize the dreams that we have for our future. The future is the ocean. He said, effective management is key to harnessing the full potential of Ghana's blue economy, which include vast opportunities in renewable energy, maritime transport, fish management and tourism, among others. Can we begin to think about harvesting the current? We've got, fortunately for us, we have a high level of, you know, in terms of uh, energy, the current within the ocean. Can we begin to look at harvesting these current and then using the current to generate power for us? So you realize that there's huge potential within the ocean and we only need to identify these things. Moving into the future, the ocean can also be um, a major source in terms of pharmaceuticals. Can we begin to look at these things, you know? There are Issues that we see as challenges, but we can turn these challenges around and use them as a resource. The concern of the Port Ladies Association is not limited only to the well being of female staff of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Last week, to mark World Menstrual Hygiene Day, the Port Ladies Association visited female junior high school students to create awareness, educate, and donate sanitary items. At the Mexico Junior High School in Tema Community 2, the PLAS team enjoyed a very fruitful interaction with the female students. As an association, we came together that we celebrate the day with them. Although the day fell on a Sunday, we decided to visit them today that they will be in school to educate them on how to keep themselves clean. When you talk about menstrual hygiene, it's all about cleanness during menstruation. And also let them know that their menses should not deprive them from going to school or enjoying social life. They should be able to mingle with their friends, go to school, do anything they want, even when they are in their menstrual state. We also wanted them to know that they need to keep themselves what to use during the menses. So we came along with some pads and some hand sanitizer. I've learned a lot. So when I see my colleague in any problem, an infection, or maybe the person has sold her, um, herself, I'll try to help that person and encourage the, that person that menstruation is not a taboo as a girl, it's a normal thing. The love, the joy that uh, class or Gapa Ladies Club uh, attached to this world menstrual day, it's very unique. We are very happy and we are praying that it shouldn't be only World Menstrual Hygiene Day that they should visit from time to time because the areas that our girls are coming from, getting mentors or our girls going far is very difficult. <laughs> The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority has once again demonstrated that the organization places premium on the health and well-being of its employees and dependents. On Saturday, June 3, the authority outdoored the refurbished GPHS Ports Hall in Tema Community 2 with a call on the port community to prioritize regular exercise. Staff of the authority partook in a three-kilometer health walk from the main assembly area in the port of Tema to the sports complex in Community 2. The GPHA Fitness Club, with over 100 members, holds regular aerobic activities in the sports hall. The GPHA Sports Hall has existed for over a decade, but has been recently furnished with new gym equipment to complement the existing ones. The EPHA has consistently prioritized the health of our staff. We were doing the work before COVID came, and then this is the very first one uh, post COVID. And the program is that during the week, three times a week, the PTI, the personal training instructors here, are about 11 of them in the authority, they will come to certain areas in the port so that during the week, 5.30 to 7, they can take some staff who cannot come to the gym. 
to 30 minutes of aerobics. Anybody that is interested should just send their uh, names to the marketing department and then the chairman of the sports and entertainment committee, my own self, and then we will arrange. Now we started with the health walk. We walked and came in and did aerobics, all totaling about over an hour. In a week, all you need is about 20 minutes of physical exercise, five times a week, and you'll be healthy. We encourage everybody, whether you are healthy, whether you have hypertension or diabetes, to involve yourself, to get on board, to do physical exercise. So those were some interesting happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. We are now going for some international maritime and port news. Crowley is investing in UK-based startup TugDog, which is developing what is billed as the world's first road transportable floating dry dock. The company plans to explore the potential use of the platforms, especially to support the developing floating offshore wind applications in California and elsewhere in the United States. It is the latest development of the US maritime logistics company, which has been moving to expand its role in the wind industry. Japanese shipping heavyweight Mitsui OSK Lines MOL, has joined the eSmart port platform prototype project, a Hong Kong government initiative to develop Hong Kong's logistics functions and port community integrative platform. The eSmart port platform prototype project aims to improve Hong Kong's function as an international trade and logistics hub. It is also a major project that will be linked to China's Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area development plan, which is expected to show further growth in the future. As part of its decarbonization efforts, MOL recently decided to invest in startups that are developing decarbonization technologies in the energy sector. So those were some international port and shipping news. We are now going for the word or phrase of the day. Remember the word or phrase of the day has been fashioned to bring you up to speed with the terms and jargons we use in the shipping industry. Today's word is FEU, 40 foot equivalent unit. FEU stands for 40 foot equivalent unit. This is a container that is the same height and width as a TEU, but twice the length. As a result, it has twice the capacity. All right, so welcome back. We are zooming into our discussion proper tonight. Tonight our discussion is on two, is in two phases. One, we're talking fitness and wellness, and two, we're taking a look at the 12.5% upfront payment of VAT by importers, you know, who are not VAT registered. And so we have our guests who are already seated, and uh, they are from the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. And our topic for discussion with this particular team is how to create a sustainable wellness and fitness culture uh, for the port community. You saw the story there where uh, the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority uh, staff were in the fitness uh, hall, and uh, you know the exercises and all aerobics and all that. I mean, so we have the instructor uh, right here in the studios uh, in the person of uh, Mr. Suleiman Mohamed Ayamga. Yes, uh, good evening and welcome to Iron Port. Uh, he's a gym instructor, GPHA. We have uh, to my immediate left, Dr. Anna Lisa Tete, who is a medical officer at the Ghana Ports and Naval Authority. Good evening, Doc, and welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. And then we also have uh, Mr. James Benjamin Gezi, who is the general manager in charge of estates and environment at the Ghana Ports and Naval Authority. Good evening, GM, and welcome, sir. Thank you, Ken. Great. Good to have you. Yeah. So, we first of all, I want to find out from you why GPHA found it expedient or necessary to invest in the gym facility. Ken, let me uh, greet all your viewers this evening. Yes. Um, as you saw on the, on the, on the, on the, sc on the screen, um, GPHA, this is the work, work area has mm. become more and more uh, desk bound. Right. Unlike before. Unlike before, you pick your files from your cabinets, move around the office. But this, this, you sit behind your desk. Mm. You have your computer. You pick, you pick every information from the computer, your files, and you even sit behind the computer. Yes. You have long hours of meetings, mm. virtual meetings. Right. So our movement in the offices are becoming lesser and lesser and lesser. Mm. And no doubt that these days the, uh, the 
problem of obesity and its attendant uh, ailments are becoming many. Right. GPHA uh, recognize this and they take the health issues of their staff very, very seriously. Mm. We prioritize the health issues. That's why we have a lot of medical facilities, the main clinic, uh, the International Maritime Hospital, and we have health posts in the ports, Golden Jubilee Terminal, Fishing Harbor, and the, the main port as well. So we take health, but the, we also recognize that good health is not only the absence of uh, uh, illness mm. or diseases. Yes. Like the UN uh, definition implies, it means the, the, the fiscal, mental, and social well-being of the Absolutely. individual. Yeah. And because we value the, the individuals as the asset of the authority, yes. we make sure that they are always fit at any point in time. Because mm. it improves performance if yes. they are fit. Right. So we started by, by uh, promoting badminton. Right. From the beginning, we had a badminton club. Right. And we're practicing at... Uh, the Comte 2 Clubhouse. You okay. can see the markings there, the, yes. the, the badminton court. Yes. That's where we, we started from. Right. It was led by management team. Okay. Uh, in, included in that management team is the director, was the director general himself, Mr. Wow. Gali. Yes. Who At rose time, to become yeah. the national badminton chairman. Right. And I'm sure he's still. Yes. Yes. So we started with them, yes. promoted them, funded them, mm. and they even identified uh, members within the community. Right. Some of them are dependents mm -hmm. who they train to become badminton players. Right. Won awards in the region in the, nationally and even went outside internationally to win awards for mm. the country. So we, we value exercise very well. Mm. At a point that's Kriti, Kramo for uh, uh, more uh, uh, facilities for yes. exercise yes. like the gym. Yes. So we're looking around for space. We went to the Comtesse Club to see whether we could use that place. Yeah. But the space available there was too small. Oh. If we use it, car parking would be a problem. So we identified this facility at the manager's flats. Right. And the land was big. Okay. So we said, why not build a, a sports hall yes. that can contain, we can relocate the badminton people within the hall right. and have a, a gym as well. Absolutely. And that's why we have that facility there. Okay. So we have the gym and the sports hall where we can have other activities as well. Yes. And I can tell you, the National Badminton Association, when they, they, uh, there's a problem at a class sports stadium, that's where they use. Yes. This are play, they use our place for our tournaments. Right. Like they had a tournament, tournament there about two months ago. Okay. Yes. Okay. So they use this facility for a tournament. tournament. Okay. So what we saw over the weekend was to adore new equipment that we had purchased for the uh, mm. gym. Right. Right. So this gym served, apart from seven GPH staff, mm. it served our dependents as well. As well. At a point, our dependent, dependent became, became more than the, the staff. The staff. And, the, and yeah. the security people were complaining. Right. So we had to create a new gym in the security yeah. facility for right. them. Okay. We created another one for uh, the fire and safety department. So okay. they also have separate uh, gyms that they use exclusively. Right. So that is what uh, is happening. And what you saw last... Uh, uh, yesterday yes. was our resumption of our quarterly health works. works yeah. We're doing it proud to COVID, and when right. COVID came, right. we had to suspend, right. and we thought it was about time we begin the, the, the health works. Absolutely. And we did a health work and also adore the new gym equipment that you saw over there. Right. Yes. Okay. So I have a list here. This is a list of gym items you need, or you have them already? It's an ongoing project. Right. You cannot have all the gym equipment that you need. I think, oh, yeah. You buy as and when a budget allocation permits you to. Yeah. Yes. As, as we've done now, we've, we've we restocked the, the main sports wall. Right. What we need to do is to rest, uh, repair the ones at the security facility and the uh, fire and safety facility. Okay. We also need new ones to augment the old ones that we have. Yes. It's been a decade now, so... We need to uh, refresh the, st uh, the stock level that we have, they have there. Okay. So you have a long list there, but yes. it's not something that we can acquire to go. Because About of 12, 12, 12 items constraints. here. Yes. We have abdominal training machine, uh, leg curl machine, a tricep extension machine, uh, bicep arm curl press machine, uh, shoulder press machine, 
five multi-station gym, uh, commercial treadmill, cardio commercial bike, recumbent commercial bike, uh, dumbbell rack with 10 pair of dumbbells, uh, squat, or some people say squat, <laughs> squat rack with a barbell and bench with incline and decline capacities. That's a full, a full yeah. list of for you. Absolutely, need, yeah. What we, yeah. we have now is part of their list. Yes. Okay, okay. All right, let me come to Doc and find out from you uh, the benefits of regular exercising. Uh, if you can let us in on that and how it is directly linked to improved physical and mental well-being of uh, our staff and our dependents and everybody, anybody that patronizes uh, this gym. So you notice that most of the time people think that once they do a strainer's activity like that of what happens in the Ghana ports and Harbour's authority, they don't need to exercise. Because when they come to the clinic and you ask them, why are you not exercising? All they keep saying is, but my work is strainer, so why do I need to exercise? But that's not what it is. You need to make some time to exercise because exercise is very, very important. Of course, I'll start with what most of us exercise for. Right. Most people exercise to lose weight or to remain fit. Yes. Um, be in a in a great shape. Yeah, mm. that's what most people do. But then there are lots more benefits to exercise than that. Exercise helps improve your mood, especially when you do it with music. You see you're dancing, you don't even know you're exercising. It helps improve your mood. It increases your energy levels, and that's seen in endurance activities, mm. like most anaerobic or weightlifting activities as um, they've provided certain gym equipment that do that. Right. Um, exercise also is very important in having certain protective functions such as protecting your heart and so the good cholesterol, I'll just keep it at good cholesterol, we call them high density lipoproteins but we'll just keep it at good cholesterol and it helps increase good cholesterol and then reduce the negative cholesterol that improves blood flow, mm -hmm. which is able to transport nutrients to all parts of your body. And right. so you realize that you are fit, your heart is protected, it protects you against certain diseases like hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. Mm. It also protects your brain. So um, most diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's are diseases that have to do with brain function. Mm. And as you're growing older, your brain function or your cognitive activity is seen to reduce. But nowadays, we see it happening in very young people as well. And so it's important that people exercise because exercise has been known to protect the brain function. Mm. Now, exercise is also very, very important because it improves your sleep. Right. Most people would come to the clinic and say, oh, doc, I can't sleep. I need some medication to sleep. All you really need to do is exercise as well. Now, something that is very, very important, especially to our working sector or in our working environment is that exercise improves reaction time. Right. So you see, we work in an environment where it's very easy for things to fall. People are at risk of certain um, um, job-related problems. So something is falling. Once you exercise, your reaction time is increased. You can easily catch it or prevent injury. And so that's one important thing that people who exercise have as an advantage over those who Do don't exercise. exercise. Yes. And so it's really, really important that we exercise. It's not just if you want to lose weight or if you don't want to lose weight, but there are so many benefits that we can go on and on about these benefits. And it's very important because I've spoken about the brain function yes. and the fact that we need a lot of energy in our environment. For those who don't work do strenuous activity in the port. It also helps with attention. It helps improve your attention and long-term memory. So, so for those who sit in the office like Mr. Gazy, who are doing a lot of brain activity, you need to be um, very attentive and focused and you need to remember very minute details. You know the kind of things we work with in the port. You need to remember the numbers. You need to remember which cargo came in, which number, so that when there's a problem, you'll be able to detect it fast. Yeah. And this is why exercise is extremely important in the so port. It brings you some element of mental sharpness. Yes, yes. And long-term like memory as well. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Okay, let me come to uh, Mr. Ayamga, uh, the gym instructor. Why would you recommend... Uh, the GPHA uh, gym to uh, staff and relatives or benefactors, beneficiaries, so to speak. 
the, the, the facility is accessible to all. Mm. But most of the staff are within Tema. Mm. And what, the reason why I recommend it to the staff and the families is that mm. the accessibility is easy for us. And it, uh, it helps the staff to what, work out before going to work or even after work, they come there to work out before going mm. home. Mm. So when you look at the authority, they believe that a healthy, stronger, intelligent, and what active human uh, resource mm. or human, human resource, yes. resource yes. are the people who were able to what, achieve the aim mm. of the authority. Mm. That is why they brought that uh, facility there. Mm. But when you look, many of them don't know. That is why my boss was asked not to revive the health work within. The, yes. the quarter, the, the, the quarterly, health, the quarterly work, yeah. health work, yes. who to have let the to staff up interest, or wake yes. up the staff yes. to what, start coming there. Mm. But mm. when you look at the facility, most of them, the staffs, they come, and the families too are always more yes. than even the staff because mm. most staffs don't know right. that there's a facility there. Mm. So anytime I go to the office, there's almost an mm. instructor. Where is the ill located? Yes. Community two, community five and two are closer. Yes. So when you see the weekdays. The gym is always full. Wow. But the weekends that because most of them stay out of Tema. Yes. They don't come. Okay. But weekdays the gym is always full. Yes. Not less than fifty. Wow. That comes every day. The, yes, sir. So I would recommend it because when you come after the exercise, mm. you feel fit. Yes. Some even come after exercise, they bath and go to work. Right. The oh, there's a facility where the they can they can take yes. their bath at the gym you can right take after your exercise. Bath okay. And go to work. Wow. Because most of the gyms don't have bath. Right. They only have the uh, urinary pit, but we have water that you can take your shower mm. and go back. Wow. So you I have a changing room? Yes, sir. Okay. Bo both male and female. Wow. So I recommend them, the staffs, the families, they should all come. We are standing by, and you have certified what, instructors. Right. Because the authority has trained a lot of instructors for the security and the fire department. Department, yeah. Which, which always join me every day. Mm. So I recommend that they should try. And come, I'm always standing by wow. for them. Okay. So how long is the gym open for in a day? A day for in the morning is yes. 5.30 mm. to 9 o'clock. Yes. That is weekends. Yes. Weekends is 10 o'clock, right? But weekdays is 8 o'clock, we close. Okay. Because weekdays, you go to work mm. 5.30 to 8 o'clock. But weekends is 5.30 to 10 o'clock. Mm. The gym is closed. Right. And the evening to the same, the 5.30, weekdays, to eight o'clock, mm. and the week is the same thing. Yeah. In the evening, five thirty to eight o'clock. All right. So, the from the look of things, you are not open to the public. You are only open to beneficiaries or it's relatives open of, to of the staff. families. Yes. And the staffs. Okay. Not to the general public. It's no. With the general public too. Okay. It's allowed. Oh, well, yeah. I see. Yes, sir. But do you take anything? Do you charge any monies? No. For, for the we, use of the gym? No, sir. Okay. We don't because they can't pay. If the authority is to charge them, they can't pay. Mm. We only the club that contribute some taking for water that we okay. have to drink. Okay. But we don't charge them for anything. Okay. Let me come back to GM and uh, find out from you. We are, we are running quickly out of time. <laughs> I just want to find out from you how much would you place at this particular um, edifice that we are seeing, this particular facility that we are seeing? We, we, yes, sir. Oh, that's, that's difficult to. <laughs> okay. That's difficult to. This was uh, the, the main wall was completed in 2013. Mm -hmm. It started around 2013. 10, they're about yeah. complete 2020, 2013. Then mm. the, the finishing continued to the end of 2013 when we adore them and started operating. But mm. to add to what uh, WWO said, um, the facility is mainly for GPH staff and their dependents. Yes. Some dependents will come with their friends as well. Mm. We don't turn them away. We don't start asking questions, uh, who are you, and that kind of, but so long as we know it's a dependent of a, a staff. Yes. But there are other, other organizations that apply to us for permission to, to also use the place. Okay. Like the Indian community around Tema community. Okay. They've okay. applied to us, okay. and they have permission to join the badminton group right. to, to use the oh, facility. Oh, as for Indians, badminton is their thing yes. too. Yes, yes. So, so the, the, the time schedules, we, 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 we structure it such a way that the aerobics team can have their aerobics time. Right. Then the badminton team can also come. Yes. Because the aerobics team use the same, fast, the same space that the right. badminton use. Right. So they come early, finish by, if it's on weekend, from 5.30 to 8, they are done. 
and the badminton guys will also come. Right. But the gym itself, which is upstairs, is also is free throughout the day. He is yes. the attendance there. He's there yes. uh, all from the time. Six to six. Right. Wow. From wow. six to six, he's available. Wow. But because people will go to work, we strike in such a way that you can come and have a little training and yes. go to work. Yes. And the evening when from work, you pass to, by yeah. and have uh, some training and go back home. Mm. Yes. Mm. So that's how it's structured. Overall, would you say the patronage has been quite um, encouraging? Very, very encouraging. At a point, I had to even step in to, to, to try and sieve out the, the, the non-GPHA, non-dependents, because yes. uh, they were becoming too many. Too many. Uh, time they have to run two sessions. Yes. So we had to start some registration. We get, started giving cards to people to yeah. sieve out some of the... So the attendance is good. Right. But I would have wished that we have more staff participating. Mm. More mm. staff participating than Absolutely. our dependents. Right. Yes. Right. Okay, let me uh, pose the last question. You have the last, the last question to Doc. I just want to find out from you whether exercising alone uh, is what is required to stay healthy for work or what should be complemented with the uh, regular exercises to make you a perfect uh, person in terms yeah. of mental capacity and everything. Yeah, so as so much as working. exercise is extremely important, our diet is also very important. And that's why in the clinic we have a dietitian. So mm. when you come to the clinic and we realize that you're, there's a problem with your diet, we ask you to see the dietitian for dietary modification. Mm. We encourage you to eat a lot of fruits, vegetables. It's also important for you to stay very hydrated. When we say stay hydrated, it's not just about drinking water, but we want you to eat water containing foods as well. Right. So some people won't be able to drink this water, but if you tell them take watermelon, eat a lot of soups, they are able to do that. That's a way of remaining hydrated as well. And also lifestyle modification. I think most of us know the things that are not good. We know the, uh, the risk of smoking. We know the risk of excessive alcohol, alcohol yeah. intake. We also know the risk of just sitting down for so long. Another mm. thing I've noticed with most workers is that, especially those who sit behind the desk, when they go to work, they sit down, they don't get up. Mm. From 8 a.m. to 5, they are sitting down, they don't get up to stretch their legs, and that's terrible. And right. so that's also, it's important that people move about. So mm. exercise, stay, hydration, stay hydrated, rest and have a good sleep, mm. good sleep, and then lifestyle modification as well as dietary modification right. are very important in maintaining good health and well-being. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Hannah Lisa Tete. He's a, she's a medical officer at the Ghana Post and Harbour Authority. Also say a big thanks to Mr. James Benjamin Gezi, who is general manager in charge of estate and environment at the Ghana Post and Harbour Authority. And indeed to uh, Mr. Suleiman Mohamed Ayamga, the gym instructor at the Ghana Post and Harbour Authority. The three personalities have been re uh, the premium that GPHA has placed on the wellness and well-being of the staff and their dependents. Indeed, we've been discussing how to create a sustainable wellness and fitness culture for the port community. And you saw in that story, uh, the new uh, you know, edifice that has been outdoored by the Ghana Post and Harbour Authority with Mr. Uh, Gezi, emphasizing the fact that they've introduced or reintroduced the quarterly health works at the Ghana Post and Harbour Authority. Thank you very much, gentlemen and lady, for coming. We are Deeply grateful for having you, and uh, we know that as and when uh, you know uh, it is imperative, we shall always uh, follow you so that we can have more of these discussions. Unfortunately, today time is on our friend. We are grateful to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having us. We're going for a quick break, viewers. When we return, we'll have the second phase of our discussion for today. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Electricity, electricity, taxes. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals. 
street lights and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the flood have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with the American Cargo Insurance Policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your known tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. Business and life can be like the sea sometimes. Sometimes serene, sometimes calm. Sometimes turbulent, and at times, it brings the unexpected. However it is like, trust Phoenix Insurance for your home, car, business, and marine insurance needs. Call 0302. 246-319 or 0243-690-492 At Phoenix, you experience a delightful service delivered with wisdom. Alright, so welcome back. We are now zooming into our second discussion for uh, tonight and uh, we're taking a look at the um, implementation of the 12.5% upfront payment by unregistered VAT importers. Now, one key policy measure to improve value-added tax, that's VAT uh, compliance, is the implementation of upfront payment by VAT registered persons, uh, registrable persons, and on imported taxable goods, including vehicles at all ports. Now, the VAT Act 2013, that's Act 870, that's Act 870, um, was amended by VAT Act, uh, that's the VAT Amendment Act, Act 2022, that's Act 1082, 1082. And uh, it imposes an upfront payment of 12.5% of the customs value of taxable goods. Now, such importers will have, however, be able to, such importers will, however, be allowed to recover this payment when they register and file their VAT returns, their VAT returns subsequently as required by the VAT Act 1082. Now, this is supposed to kickstart on the 6th of June. That will be on Tuesday. And so we have some officials from the Ghana Revenue Authority to throw more light on this particular uh, policy and what the cardinal or underpinning objective is. Uh, so it gives me pleasure this evening to introduce to us uh, Madam Felicia uh, Omo Tayo. <laughs> Owusu, uh, she's a senior revenue officer, Spring Tax Taxpayer Service Center, and we also have indeed uh, Mr. Joseph Fiajo. I hope I, get, I got the name right. Yes, Fiajo. Joseph yes, Fiajo. Uh, who is an assistant commissioner, uh, Ghana Revenue of, uh, Authority. She is uh, office manager at the NIMA Taxpayer uh, Service Center. 
Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, lady and gentlemen, and welcome to Ion Port. You've been here before. You, perhaps, is your first time? Yes. Okay, so officially, I say welcome to Ion Port. Thank you. Let me start with you. I want you, first of all, to tell us what the upfront payment of the 12.5 uh, VAT is all about. What do you seek to achieve with it? Thank you, Ken. And good evening to our viewers out there. Absolutely. The upfront payment of VAT at the port, it's actually a compliance tool. Why do we call it a compliance tool? It's just to encourage importers of taxable goods worth the value of 200,000 or more mm. to register for VAT. Yes. So when you look at the taxpayer sin, some have registered and they are fulfilling their tax obligations by filing and making payments. Mm. Now we want a situation where we we'll have parity or we we'll treat every taxpayer Yes. That is qualified to be registered as one. So one of the tools that GRA has employed is the upfront payment of VAT at the port. Yes. And it's targeted at those who are registrable but are not yet registered. Mm. Uh, the good news is that it is recoverable. Yes. After one has registered and has started filing his tax returns. returns. Mm. Okay, so let me come to you. Is this a new form of tax or something? Not at all. Okay. This is not a new tax. It mm. is the same VAT right. tax that we know. It's just a compliance measure right. being used to encourage registrable taxpayers to register and then account for the domestic VAT. Mm. So it is not a new tax. It is the same old tax that right. we are administering. Mm. Mm. So... Um, let me still stay with you. I um, want to take a look at the legislation that brought about this particular new arrangement. Is it the VAT Amendment Act uh, 2022, that's uh, 1020, 1082. 1082? That's what has yes. brought about this. Yes, Can you fill us in with some more details? So the upfront payment of 12.5 mm. is being targeted at persons who are required by law, who import taxable goods into mm. the country mm. and are required by law to register and have failed to do so. So mm. if you have failed to do so, then the upfront payment of 12.5% is applicable on you. What mm. we, we, what we seek to in, uh, do is that we want to bring some form of parity in the treatment of VAT in mm. the country, especially just as my boss said, some people are registered and they are accounting for the VAT Absolutely. and you being a registrable person, you have not registered is not the best. So yes. basically, we, it is just a compliance measure that we have implemented so that we can rake in the needed revenue to develop our dear nation, Ghana. Mm. She, she just mentioned raking in revenue. And apart from the fact that you want to show up government revenue, what else is this particular policy uh, you know, uh, targeted at achieving? Okay. The policy is aimed at roping in more taxpayers, mm. more taxable persons, mm. in that the taxable person who is faced with the situation of upfront payment mm. of VAT at the port. Yes. Once he's been able to, uh, once he has registered, mm. or we have gotten him registered, we'll be able to know his channel of distribution to get others into the tax net. Right. Right. So it, it, it's not only getting that person registered mm. and complying with the tax law, mm. but we'll be able to know his channel of distribution as well, and get to all others who deal with him. Right. Okay. okay. Now, viewers, you have to remember that you wanted to add something, but let me... No, let that's me. fine. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, you have to remember that um, our usual WhatsApp line is down uh, for today. So we're using a different WhatsApp line for today. It's crawling on your... It's right there on your screen. It's 0 and remember, the line for the call-ins has also changed. And so when the time is right, we shall act, uh, you know, give you that particular line so that you can call in and contribute to the discussion. Uh, I just want to find out from you, uh, Madam uh, Felicia, whether you have figures, you want to share with us some figures, how much this particular policy is supposed to rake in you know, for government. 
in terms of you know your <laughs> revenue mobilization efforts for, for figures we cannot share figures now because we are yet to implement it we are starting from 6th of june okay and yes. so we don't have figures to share now mm. the figures will come later when commissioner general determines so mm. Okay, so I want what we, we're talking about 12.5 percent. That's it. Yeah, basically yes. that and nothing. Like, yes. Okay, so uh, let's say because I, I, when I was reading the the this thing the, the the intro, vehicles were included. Yes. So let's say I'm a vehicle importer. I just brought in a vehicle, and I'm not registered. You know, to pay VAT. Yes. So as soon as well, as, I, if, as soon as I bring in a vehicle, it means that I have to. It is obligatory. Obligatory yes. for me to pay 12.5 percent. Yes. On the value of the vehicle or the value of the tax that I'm duties I'm, I'm supposed to pay to customs. No, the customs value, value. of the and vehicle. And the customs okay. value includes the cost of the car, mm. the insurance, mm. and then the freight. CIF. So okay. we call it CIF. Yes. That mm. makes up, that make up the that makes up the customs value. Mm. The CIF. Mm. Okay. So. We're looking at the number of cars you have imported, the value of those cars. Once they've gone past, the value has gone past 200,000 Ghana, Ghana cities. cities. You are a registrable person. So we'll give you the opportunity to go and register quickly or you pay the upfront VAT mm. until you register, then you recover it. Mm. Okay. So what you're trying to do is to make it beneficial, make it look beneficial uh, to be registered rather than yes, not, not sure. to, to be a registered person. Yes. How, how um, would I say, how predominant or how rampant is this uh, situation of people not registering for VAT but still doing very good business that you think that they could uh, uh, be, be registered? Is it a, a big challenge that you are grappling with as, as, as GRA or domestic Woman, tax division? I, I, I can't put any value or I can't pinpoint any or, or I can't say anything to that for now mm. because it's a policy that is uh, going to be rolled out from mm. Tuesday right. since June. Yeah. And looking at it, it's not like uh, it's difficult to project mm. as to the number of people you're going to get into the tax yes. net. Right. Yes. As we are speaking now, we're not privy to any information regarding the projected revenue. Mm. I have to be frank. Yes. Mm. Okay. So, uh, uh, can you? Is there a scope for the application or implementation of this particular okay. uh, policy? Sure. So, persons who are required by, by law to register, if mm. you are dealing in a taxable activity, it, you import goods into the country, what? 200,000 cities mm. and above, right. it means that you qualify to be registered. Okay. So if, if you have not registered, mm. then the upfront payment of 12.5% will be applicable to you. Mm. It means that you have to uh, make sure that you go and regularize your registration process yes. before you'll be excluded. But if you have, but if you have not registered, yes. then it means that the 12.5% um, upfront payments will be applicable to you. So the threshold is 200,000 cities and above per consignment or annually. Okay. We are looking at annual figures. So right. if, you, if you import goods into the country, let's say this month you imported goods worth to, uh, 190,000 Ghana cities, mm. you have not met the threshold. So it means that you, you, you are not qualified to make this upfront payment. Right. But subsequent months you import again, mm. then it means that we need to monitor you and then you would have to the 12.5% will be applicable on you. Mm. What category of goods yes. will be affected? Yes, the VAT Act is such that apart from goods that are placed under the first schedule of the VAT Act, all other goods are taxable. Mm. So we are looking at taxable goods with the exception of the, those listed under the first schedule or those listed under the harmonized commodity classification system as exempt at importation. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. Apart from that, we also have supplies to the free zones or imports into the free zones. Mm. Uh, bonded warehouse goods. We also have suspense regime goods. And then we have goods that are relieved at importation. 
right. that are placed under the test schedule. Mm. Uh, I mean, goes for the office of the president, uh, for uh, uh, diplomatic missions, uh, technical assistance schemes, those are excluded. Mm. Okay. So let me add something to what my Please boss do. just said. Yes. So we are looking at schools that are imported into the country for home consumption. Mm. They are included. That is direct imports. We are looking at goods that will be used in the country. Right. Then we are looking at goods that are forfeited um, for auction yeah. purposes. Yes. Then it means that if, that if you exceed that threshold, to, it means that the 12.5 percent upfront payment will be applicable to you. And then um, goods from tra uh, transfer from bonded warehouses is also applicable. Right. Just, just to add something more, you see what. Over here, if you want to look at goods that are affected, mm. they are more than those that, that are excluded. Are excluded. Uh -huh. So apart from those listed as excluded, yeah. all other goods that are taxable, mm. all other goods that a person imports, that the value is, uh, that have value more than 200,000 200, or 200,000 or more, it's, it will attract the upfront VAT. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what about if I import an item that's well above the 200,000? What do I do? Am I still liable to pay in the upfront 12.5 percent VAT? As, a, an individual, as, an individual. Yes. as an individual, you can apply for a waiver through the integrated customs management system. system okay but without the waiver you'll be a candidate for the upfront payment of the VAT at the port mm. Mm. all right I've been told that I can activate the phone line let me activate and and, and come um, like I said our regular number for call-ins is not active today so the number you have to dial uh, today is 059-38-74633 Eight seven four six three three is right here on your screen. You can call and then uh, contribute to the discussion we're having tonight. It's all about the 12.5% uh, VAT upfront payment by uh, registrable uh, importers. Uh, if you are not uh, registered, uh, once you import something into the country, uh, this is how much you have to pay in the percentage, 12.5% VAT. The overarching objective is to show government revenue up and then to also increase the number of uh, compliant uh, importers and uh, taxpayers in the country. Now, if I'm supposed to retrieve or um, re get a refund, recover. what's the process like? So, you can recover the upfront payment, just as my boss indicated. Yes. But there are some conditions that you have to meet before you can um, recover the 12.5 payments that you have made. So mm. one is that you have actually made a payment of 12.5. Mm. You have suffered that payment already. And then two, we are looking at you going to register. Mm. So go to any of the January offices near you, any of the TSCs, and then regularize your registration process. That is, you have to make sure that you make uh, payments. If you have any outstanding tax liabilities that you are supposed to settle, mm. make sure you do that, including interests and penalties. Right. And then if you also have, um, you have to file your tax returns mm. as well. Make sure that you have done that. If you have to file your tax returns, hold it there. When we come, we continue from there. Yes. But uh, <laughs> we have to welcome Emmanuel from Tema onto the lines, uh, onto the discussion. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yes. Uh, please, uh, I'm Emmanuel. Yes. I'm a, I'm a member of Achak. You're a member of? Achak. Hello, Emmanuel. Yes, I'm a member Achak. of Achak. Okay, Achak. Yes. Association of yes. Customs House Agents yes. Ghana. Okay, all right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, last Friday, there was a Achak. Yes. Hello, yeah, I, I can hear you. Yes, I think you are listening to yourself on the TV. If you can lower the, lower the volume a bit and then go, we, we can hear you. Okay. Yes. Last Friday, we had a meeting. Uh, there was a stakeholders meeting. Mm. And uh, we discussed this uh, new implementation of this uh, uh, program. Yes. What, uh, uh, there were some suggestions that came up because they met us for the first time and the second time they met us was Friday, mm. which, is, which the 
program is going to be implemented just this coming uh, Tuesday, mm. which means there's no room for us to have any input being taken up by the government. Mm. What we suggest is that if they can at least give us a month's notice so that we can also inform the importers, because we stand in for the importers. And some of these things, if we don't clearly give them a hindsight of it, then it's going to be a problem. So we pleaded with them that they should send this message across to the Commissioner General that not that we are against the program, but at least we have to have an ample time to explain every detail to all importers. Mm. That is our humble plea. So I'm surprised still they are going ahead to implement it on uh, Tuesday, which means that they don't listen to us. They only came to impose it on us. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, uh, who called all the way from Tema. Uh, you heard him. You want to respond to his uh, yes. submission? Uh, yes. Just one more. As just one more. Encourage Emmanuel mm. that we have over 50 taxpayer service centers scattered all across the country. Mm. So registration is easy. If he's having any difficulty, he can call the GRA hotlines. Mm. for an assistance. So opportunity is given to any person who has imported goods, taxable goods worth 200,000 Ghana cities at the port right. to go and register okay. before even attempting clearance of right. the goods. Okay. Okay, so there's, mm. there's an opportunity to get registered and avoid the payment of the upfront VAT. Right, okay. right. Okay, so you can also call. The number is on the screen. It is 0593 You can call in and continue to the discussion. You were uh, speaking okay. when Emmanuel came okay. through. Okay. Yes. So, so I was talking about from the recovery to, yes. process. Yes. So the conditions that one has to meet before mm -hmm. the person can make uh, yes. refund or can claim refund. Yes. So what we are saying is that the person should go to the uh, GRE office and register. Mm -hmm. The person must have filed all tax returns, paid all taxes that are outstanding, and must also uh, consider everything that the Commissioner General may determine. Mm -hmm. Must have satisfied all obligations under any tax laws. Yes. And then after, you can go onto our Taxpayers Portal app, which is www.taxpayersportal.com, and then uh, submit, your, submit your um, application there, so mm. that the DTRD officers, officers would ensure and then go through it, if it is applicable for us to refund the 12.5, which we will. Okay. All right. Let's go on to uh, the lines and welcome Justice, uh, who's calling us from Kumasi. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. I have a question about the 12.5 upfront payment. Right. Uh, does it apply to a non-resident, I mean, non ghanaian who just shipped a car value more than the 200K mm. uh, from, let's say, UK to right. Ghana? Mm. Obviously, I will not be registered with the VAT registered in Ghana. How is this going to work with me shipping a car from UK to Tema? Mm. Um, just you just import uh, shipped some Ferrari. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that was on the letter. I said, okay, so we'll, we'll get some response from uh, uh, our, our guest in the studios, yeah, Mr. Fiajo. Yes, justice. We can assure you that once you apply for a waiver through the ICOMS, that is the uh, Integrated Customs Management, Management System, system yeah. uh, Commissioner General can give you a waiver so that you don't pay the upfront VAT of 12.5 at the port. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay, so let me, let me come to you once again. Um, Justice, in his submission, uh, no, that was Emmanuel. In his Emmanuel. submission, made mention of the fact that um, the engagement time for this kind of, like stakeholders, okay, stakeholders was just too short. Yeah, he said it was just too short, and they had, had some reservations and, uh, you know, kind of like uh, pleaded that you give them up to a month for them to kind of like, okay, uh, talk to their clients, the importers, and all that, and, 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 you know, in order for them to assimilate it properly so that they can, you know, come on board properly. But um, it looks like. <laughs> uh, deaf ears, uh, you know, given to their plea. Not really. <laughs> yeah, so um, would you say there was really enough uh, stakeholder consultations? There has been a lot of stakeholder engagement that mm. I know of. Mm. 
Um, considering what Emmanuel is saying, um, what I will say is that um, he should let us start the implementation process. Mm. If they still have a challenge, our offices are opened. They should come to us. They should let the importers also come or explain issues to them, and then we can move on. Because if you are telling us we should give you a month, we've done a lot of stakeholder engagement. Management started. This law was uh, was September uh, last year, last year, 2022. 2022, mm. and then we, we had to about wait nine months. nine months. We had to wait, do a lot of stakeholder okay, so, engagement. Okay, so, so yeah, so, so hold, hold your fire. Well, can we take that again? But I understand we have I do quick who from Spin Text. Good evening, sir. Good evening, how are you? I'm terrific, by his grace. I hope you are well too. Yeah, by God's grace. Good to have you. Please shoot. Yeah, I'm just interested in your discussion. Eh? Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, this value added tax issue. To my, my understanding, as far as I understand, it is when you have added a value to something. If I buy cocoa now, and I add, I process it, I've added value to it. That's why it should be taxed. But if I import a car, a car from UK, and it is here coming to for me to drive, should I need to, to pay a VAT on it? I'm not adding any value to that car. It is even depreciating. So why should I be asked to pay a tax? Mm. Yeah, if you, if, if, Mr. Fiajo and the dear sister can explain this to me. Yes. It should be based on value. If you know whatever value you add, then you should be taxed. But yeah. I'm not adding any value to this car. Mm. Uh -huh. By the time I even bring it out, it's even depreciated. Right. Yeah. So thank, thank you very you much. much. Thank you very much, Peku. <laughs> That's a very, 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 sure. very valid question. Sure. Yes. You. You, you are talking about value added tax. It means yeah. that you have you have made a product added and you, you, you've added value and then you have, but he hasn't added any value. It's just a car. What value does he have? And like he said, it's even depreciating. <laughs> so why would he pay? Please. Okay. Uh, you see, let me. He's right. Mm. And uh, he's right to a large extent. Yes. But VAT. It's not only about changing something materially mm. or from one state to the other. Mm. Let's say from a primary state to yeah, a secondary, secondary state stage, yeah. or raw material to a finished finish product. Yeah. It's also about making the item or the goods available to the next person. Mm. You see, that is why, let's say you move something from the port. Mm to Makola market. Yes. Although you have not changed the form, mm. you have added value in that you have made it possible Available for uh, people. Uh, for Somebody a customer or a client to yeah. buy needs it, yeah. at his convenience mm. or her convenience. convenience. So it's not only about changing the form. Mm. And also, VAT is a jurisdictional tax. Right. When you bring something to our frontiers, like the ports, uh, Airport, seaport, uh, overland uh, uh, borders, mm. and all that. Now, the item is entering Ghana. The item is entering Ghana. Yes. Hold it there. Well, yes. Can we continue from the item <laughs> is entering Ghana? <laughs> <laughs> but we have Tobias, uh, who's calling us from uh, Takradi. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, Toby, please flow. Yeah. Um, my first, uh, it's not a point. Uh, Emmanuel called earlier to complain about the. Uh, uh, government not uh, accepting their input because they ask that they should give them about a month notice yeah. where they can influence the talk to their input so that yes. they will be aware so that they can uh, also play along as uh, they are uh, they are introducing this new platform. Yes, but then uh, they did not. They just uh, they just said they are rolling this out on the sheet, which is Tuesday, mm. and then. Uh, Somebody also just called quick, also called just uh, asking why should they pay tax on a car that will be imported and will be used here. Yes. We're yes. still having that explanation from Mr. Fiajodo, but it, yes. please, please but, continue. Yes. But then my problem is, uh, Ghana, it seems whatever we, we, we decide to do, any government institution decides to do is what they do. When you bring something up, you want to introduce something. You have to introduce. You have to introduce this into the stakeholders for them to also understand. They have to. They have to also buy into it. But if you just get up and just impose it on them, it's as if we are living in a 
a democratic, uh, we are not living in a democratic state. You have to bring what you have on board for us to also digest it and then understand it before we can also we can also come on board. But if you just impose it on us like this, it, it's unfair. It's unfair. Mr. Fiajo was saying this uh, when the, Mr. Emmanuel asked this question. Mr. Fiajo said they have about 50 offices around the country where they can uh, they can go and register. Yes, that is not the case. It's not the case at all. Registering is not the case, but then the understanding. Is the case. The people who are important, they need to understand why they are paying that, where it's going, what they need to do, and what they do not to do. So, right. I mean, that is just the point. It's a, uh, it's a government in power. They decide what to do at what, at any time. It's, it's unfair to read the Ghanaians. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tobias. Uh, our regards to the folks in uh, Takra. We are grateful to you uh, for the call. Yes, Mr. Fiajo. Yes, Tobias. Tobias, you are sure that once you are registered for VAT and you are filing, you will recover it. So it's not a penalty. It's just a compliance tool for uh, taxable persons to comply. Okay? And, and, and the, the law came, the law was promulgated in September 2022. Yes. Okay, so we are looking at almost nine months mm. before the implementation. Right. The implementation starts on Tuesday. Mm. This very Tuesday, yeah. tomorrow next. You see, and we have mm. engaged Guta. Right. Okay, we have engaged Customs House agents. agents yeah. We have engaged identifiable trade groups. groups. Okay, probably the message has not gotten to him. Yeah. But this medium too is being used to get to everybody out there. Absolutely, yeah. So, to bias, be rest assured. Yes. When you pay, you recover it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. just to add to what my boss also said. Just to add. All right. Let's go for Alex. I want to come. You add, all and right. then we'll go back to Mr. Fiajo for the vehicle and value addition and all that that you were explaining earlier. Right. Yes. Yeah, so Alex, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good to have you. Please shoot. Yes. Um, I just want to add something to what uh, Fiajo and the lady are talking about. Mm. Yeah, when they mentioned that if you register, you see, those who are talking about register one car to use, if the vehicle is for a personal use, then you are not coming to sell. Yes. So you need to establish, first of all, that it's a personal use. Mm. So we'll follow it up and see that it is registered in your name. So anybody who applies for a waiver, will be monitored and make sure that, for example, if you import, say, tiles to be used for your house, then it should be cleared. You should not be charged the 12.5% upfront payment. Because you are not coming which, to sell the tiles. Yeah. Yes, because you are not coming to sell it. Mm. But what we are sure, Ghanaians, is that GRE will refer that case to the nearest G uh, tax payer service center to follow it up and see that the tiles actually are used for your house. Right. If it's for a church or an NGO or those people are not supposed to pay, mm. we will not charge that uh, upfront payment. Right. But we yeah. just have to satisfy ourselves that it is actually being is used for the purpose for which the waiver was applied for. Okay. That's just the highlight I want to. Alex, do you, are you a staff of GRA? Yes, I am. Yes. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I, I did use for your submission. Great. I, I, exactly my, my, my point. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Alex. Alex, yeah, thank, Alex you. thank you for supporting us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was about telling I was about saying the same so thing. So unfortunately and our time is far spent. We're not going to be able to pick Alex who uh, to pick other calls who, and so that Alex was our last caller and I think it, it came quite time yesterday, yes. Yes. Mm. So the we are saying that it's just a compliance measure. We mm. want to bring some form of parity in the treatment of VAT. Somebody has registered for VAT purposes and is charging the VAT, an importer brings goods into the country mm. and then will not uh, charge VAT. Let's say you, we go to the same shop. Let's say you go to, let's say, Melcom, mm. and I go to the Makola market to buy. These people, Melcom is charging VAT, and then the person at Makola is not charging VAT. There's no form of uniformity. So that is why we, uh, we are bringing this policy, so that we can 
ensure that there is some form of uniformity yeah. in the system. Mm. Because if you go to the market and you are going to buy a phone, let's say 1,500 Ghana cities, and I am not registered for VAT, I will sell it at 1,000. I don't mind. Yes. But you, that you are registered, you are supposed to charge the VAT and mm. then account to us. Mm. Mm. Okay, so let me let me still uh, stay with uh, uh, Felicia right. and find out from you why have you per chance done any uh, study or any background checks to see why it feels so difficult <laughs> for people to <laughs> you know because last week we had a program and somebody said sometimes you go to a shop to buy something yeah. and then the shop owner asks you you want VAT whether you want a VAT, VAT invoice invoice. Or they will tell you, should we give you hours? They have their personal, their, 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 the, the name of the company. Yeah. They have their invoice and yes. then they have the VAT. But they are not willing most of the time to issue the VAT invoices. Or they will ask you, do you need it? Somebody called in and gave the examples of hotels that were into that business. You know, he did, the fellow didn't mention the name of yeah. the place, but said he had experienced that. They asked him, do you want the VAT invoice? You know, that kind of thing. Why? Why? I, I don't really know why people do that because mm. you see, if you are dealing in a taxable activity, you are required by law. law. If you are registered, you are required because the by money law. is not going to be you taken need, from yes. your from your sales the from your VAT money. VAT is not your money. Yes, the companies it is not for them. Yeah. it is the person consuming. That's, yes, absolutely. So it's a consumption yeah. tax. Yeah. So if the person comes and the person walks into your office and then you ask the person, do you want a VAT invoice? I think yeah. Ghanaians, we need to be a bit uh, patriotic here. Yeah. You should walk in, if you walk into a, a, a business place or a shop mm -hmm. and the person asks you that, do you need a VAT uh, invoice? I think last year or so, we, uh, we had to go and paste some decals in most of the shops requesting that, make sure you uh, accept a, a VAT, request for a, a VAT, VAT invoice. invoice. Yes. You, this money, it is not for the companies. Mm. It is you making the payment. Mm. So make sure that you insist that you want a VAT invoice because they have already uh, applied the uh, VAT on the goods that they are selling or the services that they are rendering. Yes. So why is it that they don't want to issue the uh, invoice? Yeah. They are supposed to issue the invoice and then accounts Absolutely. for the uh, uh, VAT account for the VAT for us. But if they don't, yes. it means that they are keeping your money. Yes. They have charged the VAT all right, but they are keeping you the money. money. They are trading yeah. with the money. And it's not going to the it's state. It's not going to the government. Yes. So we need we need money, I believe mean, yes. you know. Yes. Mr. Yeah, Fia, Fia Joe, yes. Yeah, you want to add? I just, just want to, to add yes. to what Felicia has just said. Mm. The moment you ask a customer mm. or a client whether he wants VAT invoice or your own invoice, yes. that will not attract VAT, VAT. that is an offense that is an offense yes. under the law right that is contrary to the law so the price quoted okay once you quote a price that has VAT in it mm. if you finish uh, serving a client and you are issuing invoice you have to issue the VAT invoice right the moment you ask whether he wants VAT or that it is an offense. Mm. So we have to get a message out there to our registered taxpayers yes. that that in itself is an, an offense. offense. Right. Okay. She, she, yes. And yeah. uh, we could have mystery customers yeah. who mm. come. Randomly. Okay, yeah. Or GRA staff who pretend. Yeah. Of course, mystery customers yes. who test you whether you're actually doing the right thing. Mm -hmm, yeah. The moment you act that way or ask a client whether he wants, whether he needs VAT invoice or yes. your own invoice, yeah. it's an offense. Absolutely. All right. And if the person picks your invoice and gives that to our enforcement team, you could be arrested yeah. and charged. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, so walk us through the process uh, in order for me to register as a VAT. Okay. Uh, that's a compliant person. If I want to uh, what's the process so, like? So registration yeah. is free. Mm. We do not charge anything for registration. You can walk to any of the GRA offices mm. and then um, submit your registration document from the Registrar General's Department. We we'll right. look at whether you are dealing in a taxable activity and by law you are required to register. It means that you are supposed to meet the threshold of 200,000 Ghana yes. cities per annum. Mm. 
there are persons to who might not uh, meet the threshold, but yet they have to register. We are looking at auctioneers, we are looking at promoters of entertainment, mm. and then um, the government agencies, uh, government agencies and, and, right. and MMDAs. So we are looking at all these things. Then the tax officer would walk you through the process, make sure you complete the necessary uh, documentation, mm. and then we will register you. So it takes it's, it takes absolutely nothing. Right. If you want to register, we don't charge anything. Mm. Just come to the to the office, and then we would register. You can even initiate. How long will it take me for me to? You can even initiate the registration, the, uh, registration online via the taxpayers portal app, okay. and then you come to the office. At least for first time registration, right. we need to know you. Okay. And I, I, can I, I? I think that it's fair. Absolutely. We need to know you we before need to come in we person. can. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. So okay. you come in person, but you can actually initiate it on the taxpayers portal, right. and then it doesn't take long. Absolutely. I think a day's work. Okay, Depending on the time I'll be able that you to come, start and finish sure, the process sure. of sure. And at times too, we are supposed to go to the traders' premises and inspect mm. the place. Right. We need to know whether the person has a permanent place of business. Okay. So we need to go and inspect the place. So right. if we have to go and inspect the place, then it's it's not going to be a day's work. Okay. But at least within let's say forty maximum forty eight hours, hours we, should, we be should be done. Okay. Our time is up. This one says I had to add something quickly. To quickly, it. our time yes. is up. Yeah. Uh, to expedite the registration mm. process. You could go ahead and draw the direction to your principal place, place of, of business. business. Right. Okay? okay. So that officers can go with you mm. that day or the moment you come to yeah. our offices yeah. to verify the principal place of business and then we take it over from okay. there. All right. In no time, you, you'll be registered. Right. This one says, what Emmanuel said is true. This email notification came just this past Thursday, and the implementation is Tuesday. I think the time given is short. So if they can give importers a little time uh, to make things right. This one is from Adumin. This, this one says, good evening. Please do people who sell imported goods by the roadside pay taxes, e.g. a place near Palace 25. They are selling all kinds of furniture. This one is from Eunice in County 25, Tema. Well, this is how we draw the curtain on this week's edition of Eye on Port here on Metropolitan Television. We say a big thanks to Madam Felicia Omotayo Owusu, uh, who is a senior revenue officer, Spring Tax Taxpayer uh, Service Center, uh, Ghana Revenue Authority. And indeed, we also have Mr. Joseph uh, Fiajo, who is an assistant commissioner, Ghana Revenue Authority. He is the office manager, Nima Taxpayer Service Center. And we've been discussing the uh, implementation of the 12.5% upfront payment by unregistered VAT importers. And remember, this thing is kick-starting on Tuesday, the 6th of June, uh, 2023. Uh, we thank you so much for watching. We say big thanks to our sponsors, Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel PLC, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, Meridian Port Services, and indeed Phoenix Insurance. Uh, remember, the show is powered by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, and the abridged version will be aired on Ghana Television at, on 8.30, at Wednesday, on Wednesday at 8.30 uh, p.m. Make it and watch that. My name is Kenny Demona. We entreat you to keep watching the rest of our programs here. And uh, we wish you a very super week ahead. God willing, next week, we shall bounce back with another wonderful edition of your favorite weekly Eye on Port. Good evening, and we are out for now.